The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 14721 in the name of Christine Graham on the continuing success of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if members who wish to speak in the debate could please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Christine Graham to open the debate. Seven minutes please, Ms Graham. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I take this opportunity to thank all who supported this motion, those who have stayed behind as members take part, and those in the audience from the Coalfield Regeneration Trust. Sorry, Ms Graham, point of order, Mr Finlay. My understanding is that there are people outside waiting to come in for this debate, Presiding Officer, and I wonder if it would be in order for us just to delay slightly for some of those people to come in. Ms. Graham, do you want to make a comment on yes, that? Yes, I think I'm very grateful um, to the member for that. I'm in the same position. I have people who are coming in, and when people are filtering out, it means those who wish to hear a member's debate at this time don't get the opportunity to come in. So I'm very grateful for that point of order. Thanks very much. Um, yes, it can be difficult with members in the gallery leaving and other people trying to come in at what is one of our busiest times but I will uh, suspend the Parliament for a few minutes. Right, thank you. I'm going to now reconvene Parliament and can I just say to members before I do, that if there are a number of members coming in for a debate, then if the parliamentary authorities are alerted, they can come to some arrangements for specific people to get in in different ways. And so, I now call on Christine Graham to open this debate. Seven minutes, please, Ms Graham. Uh, thank you very much. I'll, I'll rewind. I take this opportunity to thank all who supported this motion, those who stayed behind as members to take part, and those in the audience from the Coalfields Regeneration Trust, in particular Carol Douglas, who has been of great help to me. I could not have predicted that decades on from the early death of my Welsh maternal grandfather, a man I never knew, who died in his 40s from injuries sustained down the pits in Derbyshire, I'd be privileged to represent three former mining communities. His early death left a large family as orphans, including my own late mother, and led to her being sent to an orphanage, to a life at first separated from her brother she loved dearly, and then into the care of elder sisters. She was one of the many families that suffered from the hardships and hazards of the pits. And that sadly has continued through the decades, 
but from it grew an individual resilience and a community spirit undaunted by adversity. Pennycook came into my constituency in 2007, followed in 2011 by Gorebridge and Newton Grange. Newton Grange, home of Scotland's Mining Museum, formerly Lady Victoria Colliery, dating from the 19th century, closing production in 1981. Crossing high above the A7 in Newton Grange is the conveyor which carried the mine coal and the symbolic wheel which lowered the miners' cages dominates Main Street. There are orderly rows of miners' cottages from 1st Street to 10th Street, whose very streets and houses have coal lanes for ease of the delivery of the miners' allocation of coal into their yards. The fingerprints of that mining community, even to the Dean Tavern, a Gothenburg Tavern, touch every corner of this community and the Knitten folk. Gorebridge, too, when initially the industry was gunpowder production, later mining took over with the sinking of the Emily and Gore pits in 1847. And just as in Newton Grange, the run of the streets in the old part of Gorebridge, an indelible mark of that industrial past. Then there is the tragic history of the Morriswood pit disaster in Pennycook on 5th September 1889, when a fire in the mine led to the loss of 63 lives of the 77 men underground. Today, the Shotston Members Miners Welfare Club in Pennycook is another marker of that past mining life. Now, why am I telling you this potted history? Because while the community landscape in its streets and houses is a visible reminder of that mining past, the spirit of the mining communities is in their DNA. They all have their brass or silver bands or gala days, welfare clubs, and a proud and protective sense of community. This nowadays will also be evident in their development trusts and their other voluntary organisations. And that, if you were wondering, is where the Coalfield Regeneration Trust comes in. Funded by the Scottish Government, its purpose in life is improving the quality of life for people in Britain's former coalfield communities. It takes the role of a sort of beneficial Goliath, helping the Davids of this world, encouraging small, voluntary, charitable and other organisations in these communities to expand their scope, build new partnerships and tackle more ambitious projects. Grassroots is where it starts working and where it belongs, at the heart and soul of coalfield communities, delivering on the Community Empowerment Bill, land reform, the regeneration strategy and social justice, ensuring local people in these communities are able to fulfil their potential. Funding programmes from, are from the bottom up, with involvement from the community it aims to serve. It helps communities to get things done and the things that they want to be done. A particular aspect of the Coalfields Community Futures programme is the participatory budget fund. That's a mouthful, but important as it's a small fund offering small grants to groups and projects in each area. Community representatives are on the steering group and it's they who decide on who receives awards and how much. And it kick-starts the implementation of each plan with priority given to those contributing to actions identified in each plan. This is real grassroots in action. Then there is the Coalfields Community Futures Programme, which is an approach to local community planning and sustainable community development, aiming to encourage active citizenship and build local democracy. It enables communities to devise a community action plan, which makes a case for the things that community thinks are important and wants to make happen. Alongside the action planning process, the Trust offers each community a participatory budget fund of £20,000, which gives the community a chance to vote on their priorities for funding and makes decisions relevant to their communities. And what has been achieved through the Coalfield Regeneration Trust? In Gorebridge, here are some examples from the small. Gorebridge Primary School PTA got £688 for an anti-dog fouling campaign. But larger ones, Gorebridge Community Development Trust, for its history archive, got £4,469. Previous awards have been in Newton Grange, ranging from 5,000 to the pipe band and some 10,000 to the silver band. In that case, it was to refurbish the hall. And perhaps the largest was to Midlothian Women's Aid, 56,500 
for the refuge to be refurbished. These are examples and give a taste of the range of projects and the funding involved. While it's about money, what isn't, it's not just about that. It's about building community confidence, recognising that cohesion, that pride in identity, that mining community strength and resilience, still indefati indefatigable over the generations. That pride in community and its future and turning it into action and practical successes. So I do commend the Scottish Government for continuing to fund that trust for the valuable community work it does, a trust that delivers £1.81 of value for every pound it's received, almost doubling what it does. But most of all, I commend the Coalfields Regeneration Trust for the practical and effective work it delivers, which is visible throughout those mining communities. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Many thanks. I now open up to the general debate. We are very tight for time, so I ask members to keep to four minutes, please. And I call David Torrance to be followed by Cara Hilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would also like to thank Christine Graham for bringing this motion before Parliament. I believe that since its inception in 1999, the Coalfields Regeneration Trust has become an important and, in fact, essential programme of Scottish communities. Christine Graham rightly points out in her motion that the Coalfield Regeneration Trust is so effective because it invests in resources, expertise and knowledge into the heart and soul of Coalfield communities. The Coalfield Regeneration Trust is a truly holistic organisation, supporting a wide array of services within communities, formally based around the mining industry means. Often it has done so by empowering existing local organisations. For instance, targeted communities have seen 4,377 new jobs, 2,899 better community facilities, 1,170 new social enterprises, and more than 200,000 opportunities for children to participate in healthy lifestyle activities. This is just to name a few examples. To me, the success shows that the Trust creates an invaluable framework of support for former mining communities across Scotland. I particularly welcome this programme because it has had a positive impact within my constituency of Kirkcaldy. As many colleagues will, will be aware, mining has been a central part of the history of Kirkcaldy and the surrounding area. Not least the miners' strike in the 1980s fundamentally affected the local economy and community life. This is why the Coalfields Regeneration Trust is very valuable. In its many years of existence, the Coalfields Regeneration Trust has funded projects as varied as the day centre services, which provides activities for elderly in our community. The Fishbowl Nursery, that works to give the youngest community members a good social and education foundation. And the Frontline Five Homeless Services, which provides not only temporary accommodation for homeless members of the community, but also consults with students and other community members on how to find and finance homes. While there are many organisations in my constituency that have benefited from the Coalfields Regeneration Trust, I would like to focus today on one in particular the Linton Lane Centre in Kirkcaldy. The Linton Lane Centre does it all. It runs children's dance programmes, a daycare, child health drop-in hours, family support groups, smoking sensations, meetings, among other programmes, and provides local and recreational teams and societies a place to meet. Through its varied initiatives, engaging with many community members, Linton Lane Centre is truly a wide-reaching organisation. Linton Lane receives funds from Fife Council, but like so many other organisations, it needs supplementary funding to keep it running. While the centre receives donations from other places, as well as its incredible success in the past year, it has very much depended on the refurbishment of its facilities, which are central to its programming. These refurbishments were made possible by a grant it received from the Coalfield Regeneration Trust. Now, four years later, the centre is still thriving thanks to the Coalfields Regeneration Trust. The Linton Lane Centre is an, example, an excellent example of Coalfield Regeneration Trust's efforts. However, there is still more that needs to be done. The Centre for Regional Economic and Social Research at Sheffield Hallam Youth University reports that Britain's coalfield communities still face many obstacles. They include fewer jobs, lower business formation rates, higher unemployment rates, poor health and more people on welfare and struggling in the community sector. While projects that the Trust has already funded have positively impacted on thousands of people, there are many people living in former mining communities that need more help. The Coalfields Community Challenge is one example of how the Trust is attempting to expand its reach and help more people. The challenge allows sports groups and coalfield communities to propose projects that will increase physical activity levels in their communities. 
One of its specific criteria is that a project must engage with those currently inactive. While this is a closely targeted that focuses on one important issue within these communities and Scotland as a whole has the potential to engage and help even more people across Scotland. One organisation in my constituency, the Methil Hill Community Children's Initiative, has successfully received funding for this project. MCCI runs various activities for children and families, including gardening classes and a children's newspaper. The Trust awarded MCCI £2,900, which will enable it to build a hub for indoor activities. Mr Torrance, could you draw to a close, please? We're tight for time. change of facilities and storage space. It is clear that the Coalfields Regeneration Trust not only aims, to, but also actively con contributes to assisting Scottish communities that need it the most. I truly support Christine Graham's sentiments that this organisation must be applauded and receive continued support for its efforts. Many thanks. I now call Cara Hilton to be followed by Liz Smith. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin by thanking Christine Graham for securing today's debate and by welcoming the delegation from the Coalfields Regeneration Trust, many of them from my constituency. Uh, it may be 30 years since our coal industry was deliberately destroyed by Thatcher and our Tory government, but the legacy of poverty, of deprivation, of unemployment and ill health continues to live on in our communities, communities that will never forget the devastation caused by Thatcher in her attack on the National Union of Mine Workers. Sadly, the deprivation gap between coalfield and non-coalfield areas is getting worse. In Fife, one third of our coalfield communities fall within the 20% most deprived areas. And the impact of this is felt every single day by the children living in poverty, the families forced into food banks, the lack of jobs and opportunities and the ill health which literally cuts life short. I would echo the comments made already about the fantastic work of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust in supporting our communities, assisting people into work, equipping them with the skills, the qualifications and the opportunities, supporting fantastic projects like West Fife Enterprises in my constituency, which has received 400,000 in funding from the CRT since 2000 to re renovate the fourth view training centre and run employability programmes. And across Fife, during the past 15 years, the CRT has approved over 1,000 and grants totalling over £5 million. Investment that's made a real difference in rebuilding and empowering people in the communities I represent. In Oakley, funding a youth drama group, a homework club, a summer play scheme, a parent and toddler group and a heritage group. In Concarden, supporting the community association to set up a women's group, a forest kindergarten, a breakfast club. Supporting Tully Allen Guides, Cafe Connect, Tully Allen Bowling Club. In Salon and Steel End, supporting an information and access initiative. In High Valley Field, funding a new kitchen at the club. And in Curis, supporting the Scottish Miners Convalescent Trust to buy a minibus and build a new accommodation wing. But it's not just about funding, as Christine Graham has already alluded to. It's also about building capacity through the excellent Coalfields Community Future Programme. And this involves local people setting out their own vision, agreeing on the issues that matter in their communities and setting their own, their own priorities for action. In West Fife, the Futures Programme has been delivered successfully in Concarden, in Oakley and Comrie, and has now kicked off in High and Low Valley Fields. And I would like to pay a particular mention to Concarden, where 550 people attended the Community Future event. And one of the top priorities that they identified was the reopening of Concarden Railway Station to provide residents, commuters and visitors with quick and sustainable connections to Stirling and Edinburgh. And given the transport chaos that's been experienced by Concarden residents right now, with road closures having a huge detrimental impact on local residents and on local businesses such as the baking room, I would suggest that it's time for network rail and for the Scottish Government and Fife Council to look into this issue as a matter of urgency and see what support they can give to get it moving. Presiding officer, despite all the excellent work of the CRT, there are challenges ahead and there's a lot more to be done to achieve the vision of communities that are sustainable, prosperous, viable and cohesive without support. It's vital then that the CRT receives continued and indeed much increased financial support from the Scottish Government to allow them to continue to play a key role in revitalising our communities. I would like to see more action too from the Scottish Government to support West Fife Enterprises who are currently struggling uh, due to delays in their funding being released from Europe and I hope this is something that the Minister will agree to assist with. Uh, I will conclude, Presiding Officer, by wishing the Coalfields Regeneration Trust continued success in supporting, regenerating and empowering our communities. I know that the work they do makes a real difference day in, day out in the communities I represent. But I would also ask to uh, the risk of being controversial that the Scottish Government extends their support to our coalfield communities to address another lasting legacy 
and that is um, to act to deliver justice for mine workers by agreeing to uphold a full independent public inquiry into the policing of the miners' strike, as been pursued by my colleague Neil Finlay, to review the wrongful convictions of nearly 500 Scottish miners, including many of my constituents, and to finally tackle this miscarriage of justice. We have got the powers of this Scottish Parliament to right these wrongs, and we should be using them to ensure justice for miners, for their families and for our coalfield communities. Thank you. I have to advise the Chamber that due to the number of members who still wish to speak in this debate, I am minded to accept a motion from Christine Graham under Rule 8.14.3 that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. Ms Graham. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Formally moved. Many thanks. I put that motion to the Chamber. Is that agreed? It is. Thank you. I call Liz Smith to be followed by Alec Riley. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I congratulate Christine Graham on what was a very eloquent uh, introductory uh, speech and also, uh, I think, very informative. Um, if I can pick up one thing that uh, Christine Graham mentioned, I think it's the fostering of uh, projects and local partnerships, which uh, that fusion of uh, expertise and uh, guidance with the local research is just so important. I think it's a very uh, potent combination that can deliver such well-targeted results. Uh, for so many of the communities. We obviously heard some examples uh, of that. And I think also that localism actually has many examples for other policy uh, in, in other areas. In my own uh, area of Mid-Scotland and Fife, uh, it's home to a number of uh, coalfield communities, including those in, uh, in Fife, in Stirling and in Alloa, where the actual Coalfields uh, Regeneration Trust uh, has its Scottish head office. And that's uh, something that I think is uh, very important in Clackmannanshire because the regeneration of former uh, coalfield communities is absolutely key to building stronger, safer and more pro prosperous communities, often uh, in areas where they've had uh, tremendous difficulties in the past. There can be any number of challenges facing coalfield communities. Uh, Christine Graham uh, spoke of these. Uh, that uh, Coalfields Regeneration Trust is therefore completely right, in my opinion, uh, to recognise that the best people to come up with the innovative and well-targeted solutions are the locals themselves, because one size fits all uh, is simply not appropriate. That does not, however, uh, mean that there isn't a national balance uh, to be taken, and I think uh, the Coalfields Re Regeneration Trust is a, a fine example of how to get that balance right, actually, uh, when it comes to the huge amount of local potential that's already uh, existed uh, in Scotland but is now harnessed on a national level. I very much welcome the uh, Coalfields Community Investment Programme which supports obviously lots of activities delivered by community and voluntary organisations working in Scotland's uh, coalfield communities. That investment uh, can be capital or it can obviously be revenue awards which I think range from somewhere around uh, 500 up to a maximum of 10,000 and these are obviously extremely important. I know that a number of local orga organisations in Mid-Scotland and Fife have benefited recently, including many community groups which will help develop uh, around the Kelty area as well as in uh, Kirkcaldy. I know we're short of time, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, so can I just uh, add my congratulations to the uh, Coalfield Regeneration uh, Trust. I think they do fantastic work and uh, I'm delighted to take part in this debate. Many thanks. And I call Alec Riley to be followed by Adam Ingram. Thank you, President Officer. Can I say that I had the Chairman of the Coalfield Regeneration Trust, Councillor Bob Young, for five, on the phone to me this morning and asking me to thank Christine Graham for um, bringing this debate forward and securing this debate today. I certainly um, have been a big supporter of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust over many years, and I attended an event in Kelty recently where um, there was a number of groups along getting awards for local funds, and, and it was a really positive evening. But crucially, whether it was Kelty, Benarty, and my constituency, Carden, the Coalfields Regeneration Trust and in Cowan Meath now are working to develop local community plans. And when we saw the bill going through Parliament in terms of the Community Empowerment Bill, one of the questions was in, in the communities where there was higher levels of deprivation was the capacity there to be able to actually um, get communities to drive that agenda forward. So the, the role of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust has been changing over those years and a key role that they're playing in my constituency right now is capacity building and that's something that the government have accepted we need to do. And for that point of view, I would actually say that I think there is a changing role and a bigger role for the Coalfields Regeneration Trust uh, moving forward. Because the fact is, 
you know, if we take a nostalgic view of, of the coalfield communities, I'm a miner's son, I come from a mining community and I'm very proud of that. But the fact is that in those communities we still have third and now fourth um, generation um, deprivation, inequality, poverty. So the, the scars of the mining industry in terms of poverty and deprivation are still very much in existence in coal fuel communities across Fife and across other parts of Scotland. And we therefore need to have a programme that focuses. I'm continually arguing in this place that we need to have an anti-poverty strategy that runs through all levels of government. But if you started to actually ask where is the social deprivation and the poverty, and you go to a former industrial area and the coal fuel communities across Scotland, that's where you'll find much higher levels of poverty and deprivation. And if we are serious about tackling that, then part of that strategy must be to have organised organisations on the ground that will build capacity so that communities, the type of work that was being talked about earlier by the, the, the member for Kirkcaldy, who, who seems not to be here now, and others, the type of the Linton um, Exchange Project, other projects, those types of in innovation will help people and we need to use that to move forward. I did notice this morning as well that the, the RSPB had actually put out a briefing for today. And it was interesting, one of the things that they highlighted in that briefing was the, um, the aftermath of the open cast coal mining. And in Fife and in East Ayrshire in particular, the scars of the disaster that has unfolded in terms of the open cast coal mining is still there. And while we need to have a bigger debate someplace else on that, I certainly think it's worthwhile mentioning today because these communities are going to be left uh, with these environmental scars unless we actually do something about it. So I would congratulate Christine Graham. I would say to the Minister, is there still a need for the Coal Fields Community Regeneration Trust? Because it's a legitimate question to pose. Absolutely is the answer. It's a change in role. We need an anti-poverty strategy. We need to tackle deprivation and poverty in the coalfield communities. And the Coal Fields Regeneration Trust, in my view, has a key role to play in building capacity in doing that. Thank you. Before we move on, can I just advise the Chamber that the Member for Kirkcaldy sought my permission to leave the Chamber because of urgent personal uh, reasons, so I would like to put that on the record. I now call Adam Ingram to be followed by Neil Finlay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, firstly, can I congratulate Christine Graham for securing this afternoon's debate. As she rightly points out, the Coalfields Regeneration Trust has been, has been making a, an invaluable contribution. Mr Ingram, could you turn your microphone round slightly? We're having some difficulty hearing. OK, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just making... Oh, that's better, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As I was saying, the CRT has been making an invaluable contribution to the economic development and well-being in former coalfield communities for many years now. In my own constituency of Carrick, Cumnet and Doon Valley, some 138 funding awards have been made to 101 local organisations, totalling some uh, £2,400,000 since the year 2000. And it's fair to say that the Trust has been the leading regeneration organisation dedicated to improving the quality of life in former mining areas. Areas, as others have said, that have been blighted for decades by deprivation ill health and unemployment. It should be recognised that many of the communities in my constituency came into existence, grew and declined in direct relation to the fortunes of the coal industry. And even today, as Alec uh, Rowley mentioned, the apparent demise of the open cast coal industry is visiting more misery on communities which have never been able to attract new industry to replace former levels of economic activity. In that context, it's hard to overstate the work of the Trust, which aims to empower coalfield communities to help themselves. Delivering services that help people gain skills, achieve qualifications, find work, set up and grow new businesses, and become more active in their communities. And in recent years, as again Alec mentioned, the focus has been on 
building community capacity and asset building, to use the jargon. I'd like to highlight two examples of this work in my own constituency. Firstly, the Dalmellington Action Plan 2012-17, funded by the Trust Community Futures Programme, which defined the priorities and projects the community would pursue over the five-year period after an extensive process of community engagement. Many significant improvements have resulted from town centre building frontages to woodland paths, from increased police presence to annual litter campaigns, from upgraded youth and leisure facilities to business start-up support, and from new signage to tourism development support. Some £240,000 of external funding has been leveraged into the original 150,000 from the Trust to implement a programme which is carrying this community forward with a renewed confidence. The second example is Netherthird Community Action Training, a social enterprising, uh, enterprise providing training and employment opportunities in gardening and outdoor maintenance for young people across Cumnockan District. Nether Third Community Action Training was established in 2012, following on from the success of being the Coalfield Community Challenge winner in 2011, receiving a financial award of £50,000 from Coalfield's Regeneration Trust to kickstart the social enterprise. Last year, the Minister Margaret Burgess and I had the pleasure of visiting Nether Third Community Garden to meet Jamie Campbell, the young entrepreneur responsible, and to see Netherthird Community Action Training in action. Suffice to say, Presiding Officer, I'm grateful for the activities of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust in Carrick, Cumnock and Doon Valley, and commend their work to Parliament. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Neil Finlay to be followed by Colin Beattie. Thanks, President Officer, and can I apologise? I have to leave after I speak because to meet a, meet a constituent. Um, I want to pay tribute to the CRT and to the uh, employees and trustees, and uh, particularly my good friend Nicky Wilson and uh, a former trustee, Joe Thomas, an uh, ex-colleague of mine. Um, we have to look at why the CRT was established. It was established by the Labour government to uh, look at and address the deep-seated issues in the former mining communities. And that was after intense lobbying by mining MPs like Dennis Skinner, Mick Clapham, Eric Clark and others, because they saw firsthand the lasting and devastating impact of uh, the pit closures on their communities and the impacts on the people living there. And I have seen it myself for my entire uh, working life. Uh, throughout that time, in my own community, uh, I've observed the fallout of the closure of uh, the, the Pokemic Colliery and British Leyland uh, down the road a bit. And I've been involved uh, in many different projects that have attempted to rebuild uh, that, those communities and put in uh, infrastructure and services uh, to support the people there. And the CRT has been, uh, been there, uh, involved in many of these projects. Projects like in Logan Lee, the pit stop uh, which is attached on the miners' welfare, a fantastic resource uh, for the village. The West Calder Community Development Trust is a recent development, and they are doing terrific work there, as are the Stonyburn Future Vision Group. Uh, in Blackburn, the, C the credit union has benefited greatly and now operates across the whole area. And in Faltis, the Community Development Trust hub project and the miners' welfare have, uh, have benefited greatly. All fantastic groups doing much-needed work, and many, many more as well. Uh, but I, I know that similar work goes on, and, and many people have mentioned them. Christine Gray mentioned Gore Bridge, Newton Grange, uh, also areas like Danderhall, Dalkeith, and the rest. And we don't have the 26 per cent unemployment rate that we had in 1985 when the pit closed. Thank God for that. But the reality is that these communities are still suffering, and suffering badly with higher rates of unemployment, low business start-ups, low pay, job insecurity, high claimant rates and financial deprivation. And yes, they may have financial deprivation, but what they have is humanity, decency, dignity. And whatever happens this week when the final deep mine in Scotland closes, 
with great thanks to Ms Smith's uh, party and its historic role in that, that the people won't die, even though the industry has gone. And that's what we have to do, is support the people in these communities. So we need the work of the CRT and others in that partnership uh, who work alongside it to continue. We need to keep funding these projects. But the reality is, and I can't come here and take part in this debate and not raise this, the reality is that the, Sco the Coalfield Regeneration Trust has had its funding hammered over the last decade. It received £1.8 million from the Scottish Government in 2007, and in 2013 it, will re it received £422,000, a 75% cash cut in its budget. That is forgetting about inflation, 75% cash cut. So it would be remiss of us not to mention that in this debate. I think it is fantastic the work that the Trust does, but think how much more work it could do in your own constituency, in Cote Bridge, presiding officer, in the constituencies of all the people represented here, if the funding went back to what it had before. Because I know that in my constituency, we need much more of the type of community development work that the CRT and others are involved in. I just wish the government would put its heart into it as well. Thank you. Now call Colin Beattie to be followed by Claire Baker. Presiding officer, may I start by thanking Christine Graham for instigating this debate and allowing the important work of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust to be highlighted in this chamber. It must be clear to the chamber that from what you have heard so far this afternoon, the Trust provides invaluable aid to parts of our constituencies that are most in need of help and rejuvenation. My own relationship with the Trust dates back to 2007, when I was first elected as a councillor in Midlothian, and at the time I was keenly aware of the decline of the coal industry and it had taken its toll right across the Lothians, and the Trust's own 2013 report, Analysis of Coalfield Area Deprivation in Scotland, confirms this. In the six years between my becoming a councillor and this report's publication, the Lothian Coalfields reported the highest increase in the most deprived areas in a group including Ayrshire, Central and Fife and Lanarkshire. 21 per cent of Lothian's data zones ranked in the worst 20 per cent of data zones in Scotland, five percentage points higher than in 2006. That is obviously a major concern, especially in this age of austerity. However, funded by the Scottish Government, the Coalfields Regeneration Trust is providing badly needed help and funding to many local organisations to help and encourage local communities out of this decline from the ground up. I have visited and worked with many of the groups who have received such help, and I could speak at length advocating the work these groups do for their communities, for example, the Mayfield Neast Houses Development Trust, Youth 2000 Project, Midlothian Association of Play, Bonnerig Old Folks Club and Cowsland Village Hall Association. And these are just some of the local charities that have received help and funding from the Trust for a wide range of projects. I have seen it firsthand how communities have benefited from this funding and the results of the Trust's support. One of the more recent initiatives the Trust has launched is a, a Dragon's Den, which allows sports clubs and organisations based within Scotland's coalfield areas to pitch for funding from a range of dragons, including Nicky Wilson, the NUM President, and Jim Leishman, an honorary director of Dunfermline Football Club. And the next den is, in fact, tomorrow in Alloa, and I am sure the Chamber passes its best wishes on to all the participating groups but mind you, I'm not sure I'd want to be in their shoes. Um, just to highlight a, a specific instance of CRT's broad approach and responsiveness, uh, as some of my fellow MSPs and those in the gallery may know, I'm a director of the Midlothian-based business Launchpad, which aims to provide support and assistance to young people who want to start their own businesses. And I recently met with Pauline Douglas and Alec Downey of Coalfields Regeneration Trust to discuss... Of course. Christine Graham. I simply want to put in the record, I'm glad you got the name correct, Pauline Douglas. I think I refer to Pauline as Carol. I think I've got Christmas on the brain, so I want to apologise for miscalling her. Thank you. <laughs> Colin Beatty. Ah, borderers. <laughs> um, I recently met with Pauline Douglas and Alec Downey of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust to discuss the possibilities of partnering together to raise more awareness of the Launchpad and to expand participation. And the meeting was extremely fruitful, and it has been clear to me 
for some time now that while the launch pad has everything in place to provide the facilities required for any prospective business, we can do better in making ourselves known to our potential audience on a wider scale. And the Trust representatives grasped this straight away and proposed several initial ways of how they'd be able to provide positive engagement. We'll be meeting again in the new year, and it's very much my hope that we can expand our reach to those young people who have a great business idea but are lacking the support to take it forward. And there's no doubt that the Trust's reach into the heart of our coalfield communities allows it to speak to many constituents who may not otherwise be heard. In conclusion, it's clear to me, and I hope to all those in the Chamber today, that the Coalfields Regeneration Trust provides an important and vital level of support for our communities in enabling local people coming together to decide ways forward for their own areas. The Trust is, without doubt, targeting its help where it's most needed. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Trust for everything it's done in Midlothian, North and Musselburgh to date, and look forward to, other, to, and look forward to them helping in other similar regions in Scotland. And to, and to continuing working with them in the years to come. Thank you. I now call Claire Baker to be followed by John Wilson. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to congratulate Christine Graham on securing uh, today's debate. The Coalfield Generation Trust is situated in Alloa in my region, and I know how much excellent work it has done over the past 15 years. Um, I grew up in Kelty, that's a coalfields village where much of the community was then employed by the coal board, either working directly in the mines or, like my dad, working in the workshops in Cowden Beath. Um, this was an industry where people's livelihoods became a political battleground and the running down of the mining industry was devastating for many communities across my region. Um, these are villages whose identity was determined by its mines and the employment that it gave. They were villages of high employment with a civic society that was supported by mining families. Um, I held an event recently in um, recognising Jenny Lee MP last week in Loch Gellig's Miners Institute, and I chose that venue because of its historical relevance for the area, but it also shows the legacy that can be relevant within the present day. Uh, the Coalfields Regeneration Trust was established 15 years ago to focus on regenerating former mining communities. Um, some might think that the mining industry declined many years ago and that times have moved on, that there would be no need for this kind of trust. But 30 years after the decline of the coal industry, there is a lasting and continuing legacy of poverty and deprivation, a set of circumstances which in recent years has faced even more pressure. There are still worse levels of deprivation in coalfield communities when compared to other areas, and the Trust report that Fife, by some margin, has the largest and most pronounced concentration of coalfield deprivation within Scotland. Um, that's one of the reasons I welcomed the Fairer Fife Commission report that was published in Fife last week, and the Trust must be one of the key delivery partners in this going forward. Um, I support Neil Finlay's comments earlier about the declining budget of the CRT. With a fairly modest income of 24 million, the Trust has supported an employability agenda and a focus on people's health and well-being, offering very targeted grassroots support for communities and their families. And Pauline Douglas and our team are very approachable, positive and really understand the communities they are working in. Um, it's the only organisation that has an exclusive focus on coal field communities, and it is more than just a funder. It works in partnership with people and builds communities' um, capacity. Uh, the briefing from the Trust highlights so many positive examples, it was difficult to choose um, which one to highlight. Uh, I particularly like the Wheels to Work project. This is a very simple project which leases mopeds and scooters to young people in rural areas in Fife who are having difficulty getting to work or training or education. It provides a simple solution to the problem, but it is one solution which also develops self-respect and motivation. There is a specific long-term aim, such as gaining a driving licence. There's also the option of buying the vehicle at the end of the loaning period. It's a clever little scheme which reflects the ethos of the trust, finding solutions, empowering people to change their lives, giving them confidence and responsibility. Um, I spoke to the trust recently at my party conference. I was due to speak on a panel for the Electoral Reform Society on participative democracy, and I fortuitously, fortuitously spoke to the trust beforehand. Um, they told me about their Coalfields Capacity Building Programme, which uh, works to build community engagement, enthusiasm, partnership working and community ownerships of their future. We talked in particular about the Coalfield Community Action Plan, which engages communities in community action planning. And as Christine Graham highlighted, there is a small participatory budget fund which offers grants to groups and projects who action the plans. Um, they recently ran this process in Methyl and had a really positive level of community engagements. 
Um, communities who are living with poverty can often feel remote from decision making or feel that their vote at the ballot box doesn't really change their lives or their communities very much. Projects such as this from the CRT give communities power, control and decision making, bringing people together to improve their community. And for every £1 invested through participatory budgeting, additional £5 of external funding has been secured and involvement in the process has been very high. There's been real enthusiasm from communities. So, President Officer, Scotland needs a healthy, engaged democracy and I commend the Coalfield Generation Trust for taking this approach and for all the work they do across Coldfield communities in Mid Scotland and Fife. Many thanks. Uh, John Wilson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I congratulate Christine Graham for bringing this debate to the Chamber today and also pay tribute to a former member of this Chamber, Helen Eady, which uh, instituted a number of debates in terms of the Coalfield Regeneration Fund because the issues that we've always felt, and Neil Finlay, I think, hit the nail on the head when he said that it was always round about the funding aspect that we seem to have these debates and not just to congratulate the trust and the work that they've been doing in communities throughout Scotland. Can I say, also draw members to my register of interest, and this will become apparent in two minutes. The work of the Coalfield Regeneration Trust uh, has been important, vital, and essential for many communities throughout Scotland. Former mining communities who were left in a situation when the industry was actually killed off, finding themselves in deep depression as well as deprivation. Now, the issue for the Coalfield Regeneration Trust and the establishment in 1999 identified the real issue in many of these villages and communities throughout Scotland that had actually been left without any support and without any structures in these communities. So clearly the Trust has done a lot of work in the time that has been in existence. And I can speak from practical experience of seeing the work that has been done in areas such as, and I'll use the Deputy Presiding Officer's own constituency of Cope Bridge and Christen, which I know well, uh, as, as she well knows, of Bedley uh, and Annette Hill, Auchingeek and Murraysburn, and Cardown, and I have to apologise to people at Cardown saying steps next to that, but the work that's been done, particularly in Murraysburn, and the work in terms of other members have made reference to the community building, uh, capacity building programme. In Murraysburn, three, four years ago, the Coalfield Regeneration Trust went in, worked with the community, they developed their own community plan, they surveyed the community, they identified what their priorities were their priorities, not the priorities of the council or the government. And they've put that in a document that they have presented to local authority to say, this is what we would like to see happening in our community. Now, while many members may have been out shopping last Saturday in the wind and rain, I was uh, participating in an event in my own village in Glen Boyd. And while we were switching on the Christmas lights and we had a Santa's grotto, along with that, we had taken the decision, or the community that are involved in the capacity building in Glen Boyd, decided to survey the members of Glen Boyd about how we would use the £20,000 that's been granted to the community and what groups should be prioritised in receiving that funding. Not the group that's been established to look at that, but they, they've actually decided to consult the wider community on what groups should receive the funding. I also received a survey forum uh, about three weeks ago, through the door, from the, the Community Development Trust and the, looking at what the issues were and for the issues in terms of Glen Boy. And those also formed part of Saturday afternoon's consultation, asking people to say, do you agree these are the priorities for our community? Do you agree this is what should be getting taken forward? And I think Alec Rowley made the point quite rightly that this is about community capacity building from the grassroots up. This is not an organisation that's been formed from out externally because the, all the, the Coalfield Regeneration Trust has done is facilitated the community coming together to identify their own, their own issues. And while I could go on, presiding officer, I just make the plea, like others have made in the chamber today, can we get a guarantee in the Minister's summing up speech that the funding for the Coalfield Regeneration Trust will continue, but not only continue, could the Minister give a guarantee that we actually see an increase in the funding to allow the Coalfield Regeneration Trust 
not only to continue the work that it's been doing, but to enhance the work that it's been doing for many uh, communities throughout Scotland so that we could all get the benefit of understanding what community empowerment for the grassroots is about. Thank you very much indeed. Many thanks. I now ask the Minister to respond to the debate, please. Seven minutes or so, Minister. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, whenever we have debates about anything connected to Scotland's traditional industries, whether that's steelworking, shipbuilding, which is where my Scottish side uh, was involved, or, or coal mining, there is a real poignancy, there's a real sense of identity running to the heart of the issues that we're talking about. And in part, it must be accepted that that is a result of the, the shared suffering of the legacies of government's past. But looking to the future, I really do want to commend the Coalfield Regeneration Trust for the sense of mission that comes from that identity, the real mission to improve the quality of life for the people who live in Scotland's former mining communities. And since 1999, the Scottish Government has been the sole funder of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust activity in Scotland. That demonstrates the cross-party commitment to the regeneration of our coalfield communities, in contrast with the decision of the UK Government, who ended their funding to CRT England last year. Our continued support for the work of the Trust in delivering community-led regeneration activities delivers benefits to some of the most disadvantaged communities in Scotland. And our vision is a Scotland where our most disadvantaged communities are supported and in the driving seat themselves of the efforts to solve problems that they know all too well because they are the ones living them every day. The Scottish Government's regeneration strategy and programme for government both highlight the importance of community-led efforts and community empowerment. Our Fairer Scotland programme to develop a social justice action plan shows the importance we attach to direct public involvement in these decisions and the building of these strategies. And we recognise that community anchor organisations in particular can drive change across everything, environmental issues locally, local economic growth, unemployment, arts and cultural activity, and crucially, they deliver what local people know will make a difference. In 2015-16, we substantially expanded resources to support community-led activity across Scotland. By investing £20 million through our Empowering Communities Fund, we are funding action to tackle poverty and inequality across Scottish society, including by the CRT. The Trust has invested over £21 million in the Scottish coalfields to create jobs, help people into work, support new businesses and social enterprises, encourage healthier lifestyles, help groups at the heart of their communities to become successful and self-sustaining. You name it, they've done it. And over the past two years, we have provided funding of one and a half million to the CRT to help deliver its programmes in coalfields communities. But more than that, we continue to learn from the Trust and other organisations in Scotland that support community-led regeneration. Basically, the initiatives that work best at local level. And one of them that's been highlighted already, and I really want to draw attention to, is that Coalfields Community Futures programme. It targets the ex-mining communities that are suffering multiple problems, but that haven't previously benefited from funding from the Trust or other grant makers. It works at a very local level and works with residents and groups to identify the community priorities by delivering a community action plan using the residents themselves as researchers. And by making use of a small fund and crucially Crucially, in my mind, using participatory budgeting, residents themselves make decisions on improvements in their communities. Capacity building is needed and provided by the Trust, developing as well new community skills, which hopefully cause the establishment of community anchor organisations to provide a focus then for ongoing activity. I saw this model recently, uh, just last month, in Preston Pans, and I can't commend it highly enough. It's not enough to do things to communities that we believe are needed. We must have faith in the spirit and uh, empower communities themselves to do the things that they know are needed. The Community Empowerment Act 2015 is important for this. It will help support more initiatives like those of the CRT. This is an act that can and must provide new vigour if it is to work. It needs to provide new life, new routes for communities to take to ensure that their ambitions can be realised. 
Participatory budgeting, or PB, like that done by the CRT, is a massive opportunity, not just to ensure that decisions are better made because they're being made by people at the front line, but to ensure that people feel ownership of those decisions. And I totally agree with Claire Baker to re-engage them to participate in decision-making of all kinds. It is community empowerment putting its money where its mouth is. I am an ardent supporter of PB, and the Scottish Government is supporting and stepping up efforts to build capacity and understanding of PB across the country. I would recommend pbscotland.scot to anyone interested in that work. And in the town hall in Preston Pans last month, I met so many people who are enthusiastically casting a vote for their favourite projects, securing funding directly from local residents. It's not only about days like this, but about the work, the ideas, the connections that the process generates, how it brings individuals and groups together, and the real positive energy that creates. The Scottish Government is going to continue to support community-led regeneration in our coalfield communities. But I repeat that the CRT work has many aspects that I hope others look to as well and emulate. Looking to the future, we are going to keep working with the CRT to help it develop further and enable it to build on its strong profile in these ex coalfield communities. The Trust staff is working with Scottish Government staff on how initiatives like participatory budgeting could be rolled out more widely alongside the, uh, the jargon here of outcomes-based monitoring, community-led regeneration. But we need all of this to help reverse the decline that our former coalfield communities have experienced and to find ways to bring communities forward and up. So I would like to add my thanks to the Coalfield Regeneration Trust for their work, all their amazing work in our former coalfield communities. It's vital work that makes a difference because it is embedded in the priorities of those communities themselves. It is a model example of community empowerment. It is to be congratulated and, frankly, it is to be learned from. Many thanks, Minister. That then concludes Christine Graham's debate, the continuing success of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust. And I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30pm.